Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair and the Mysterious World of the JFET. Okay, so this is all you need to know about JFETs to fix stuff. Let's have a look at these rather enigmatic components. This is not a particularly common thing. It has some very, very interesting properties. And if you're watching this, you probably want to know how these work and how we can test them. So, what does our JFET do? Well, a JFET, or junction FET, is a field effect transistor, like a MOSFET. It's a similar type of device. So, both the MOSFET and JFET are voltage-controlled switches, basically. The JFET symbol, I'll show you this, looks like this, but there are a number of variations on this one. So, we have a symbol like so. This is an N type, so just as we have with MOSFETs, we have N type and P type. Okay, the P type loops like this. Okay, and the pins on here are drain, source, gate, just the same as you would have on a MOSFET gate source okay there's a few variations on this symbol so in both n type and p type with the arrow pointing in different ways you can have a symbol like this you can also have a symbol again in both n and p type like this and there are a few extra variations besides so here is a jfet these are salvage ones k30a or 2sk30a let's have a look at the data sheet and here we are 2sk30a you'll see straight away another variation on this symbol this is an n type with the arrow pointing outwards p type would be pointing inwards okay package drain source and gate so the gate is on the center pin uh, some rating so this will dissipate 250 milliwatts it doesn't give us an actual current as such i don't see here anyway uh, we have a gate to drain voltage minus 50 so the maximum gate to drain is minus 50 on the gate, gate to source, minus 50. There's a maximum ratings, okay. And it tells us this can be used for a charge sensor, meter amplifier circuits, rheostat chopper, gain control for AGC, an electronic switch. In actual fact, probably the most common use for JFETs that I find is an audio amplifiers. Where they are, in actual fact, use a switchy. So they're used to switch the audio signal to switch an audio path on or off. Let's have a look at our JFET. So here is the component analyzer. We know the green on the center is the gate. Okay, switch it on, analyzing. And it tells us this is an end channel junction FET or JFET. And it says drain and source not identified. It doesn't know which is the drain and which is the source. Now. Does that mean there's something wrong with my component analyzer? No, there isn't. Does it mean that this particular component analyzer can't test JFETs properly? Yes, it can. So why does it say the drain and source are not identified? Well, this brings us to a very special property of JFETs. Here on my breadboard, which has had a very hard life, as you can see, I've made a little circuit. So we have a JFET. We have an LED, we have a 1K resistor, and a few wires. That's all we have. Let me draw this on a piece of paper so you know what we actually have. Here's the circuit which I've built, and I've also shown the equivalent using a MOSFET and a bipolar NPN transistor as well. So, with the MOSFET, you quite probably know, the gate has an extremely high resistance or impedance there's effectively no current flowing through this way 
the input resistance is for all intents and purposes infinite which means that if we touch this wiggly line which represents my piece of white wire even with a finger we can get this MOSFET to switch on and the same applies with the JFET. So the JFET operates in the same way. It has an extremely sensitive gate, and we can just touch this wiggly piece of white wire, and it'll switch on. The transistor, no. With this transistor, we need a certain amount of current flowing from the base to emitter to allow a larger current to pass from the collector to emitter. So the transistor has gain. Let's say it has a gain of 100 times. Then if we want to have 100 milliamps, which is rather more than our LED would like, but just for the sake of argument, if we wanted 100 milliamps flowing that way, with a gain of 100, we would need 1 milliamp flowing this way. So all circuits effectively do the same thing. They light the LED, but they have different properties. Well, so far, these two sound likely the same, yeah? Well, there is a difference. So gate impedance on this MOSFET is basically, as I said, infinite, which means I can connect the white wire directly to here, and the current flowing through here will still be zero. Yeah, it's zero. It's an infinite resistance. But if I do the same with my JFET, it will conduct. And that is because JFET is a junction FET. And the junction is a semiconductor junction here, basically the equivalent of the base emitter junction in here on the transistor. So current will flow that way. And just with the bipolar transistor, if you connect this directly to here, then there's no resistance in the base. And you may think that will burn out the transistor or burn out the MOSFET. In actual fact, if you look at this circuit, there is a resistance. It's here. Okay. And any current flowing into the base or the gate has to flow through here. So that resistor will limit the current. Effectively, the source or emitter will float up to a voltage just below the base or gate. Now on a transistor that is about between here and here about 0.7 volts and on the JFET it's very similar actually 0.6 0.7 volts. So if that resistor is large enough then no you won't burn it out. But we could build the circuit a different way and I'm going to do this later in the video build the circuit like this. So now we have the LED through the resistor connecting to the drain, source to ground. Okay, the same with the MOSFET, the same with the bipolar transistor. And the circuit does the same thing. It lights up the LED. And if we touch the gate here or the gate here because it's so sensitive, the LED will switch on. If we touch the base, no, it won't. If we want to light the LED, we would have to connect the base to here. But if we do that, there's no resistance in it here now, yeah? So there's nothing to limit the current. So we would burn out the transistor. And the same would apply if we do that. What we need to do is add a resistor in here, a resistor in here to limit the current. Because this resistor is no longer passing that current, it's only passing this current. You can see that, yeah? The MOSFET, it's still fine, because the MOSFET has an infinite input impedance. So, basically speaking, a JFET has both of these properties. There is some differences. We need an appreciable amount of current flowing this way to get an appreciable amount of current flowing that way. This acts like it has pretty much an infinite gain. So even if we put a very high value resistor, like a mega ohm in here, the LED will still light full brightness. But that is the basic principle. So you can see that the JFET has some properties of both bipolar and MOSFET. Now we've looked at that theoretically, let's do it in practice because it's always much clearer in practice.
Okay, so there's power on there and nothing's happening. Oh, but look, the LED has started to light up. In fact, if I touch it with my finger, it will light up. So, this is very sensitive because there's a very high resistance on the gate. It requires extremely low current to switch on and I can actually make it float and I can sometimes make it stay on at various brightnesses, okay? If I connect the gate to the positive, the LED will come on bright. And it stayed on now, okay? If I touch it a couple of times, I'll get it to go out. So it's extremely sensitive, yeah? And look, I'm only even touching the insulation of the wire now and I'm turning it on. I can effectively turn this on probably just by coming close enough to it. Yeah. Simply through the insulation of that wire. Now, a MOSFET has a similar property to that. This one's extremely sensitive, more sensitive than most MOSFETs that I've seen. Well, this has another interesting property as well. We'll switch the power off. And I'm going to take my JFET out and I'm going to put it in back to front. Uh, all the way around. Okay. Switch it back on. You saw a flick, watch. It's not quite as sensitive in this direction. Oh yeah, it will, it'll light up. It's about the same. Okay, go up to the power. I can light it right, it'll stay lit until effectively it discharges again. So, my JFET actually is bi-directional. It doesn't matter which way in the circuit it goes, as long as the gate is the gate. It works just the same. That's why my component analyzer couldn't tell me which is the drain and which is the source, because they're interchangeable. Yeah, they're interesting devices, aren't they, these JFETs? I've reconnected the circuit now, so we can wire it this way as well. We can go from the power coming in through the 1K resistor, through the LED to one end of the JFET, drain or source, the other end of the JFET to ground. And I've also added a one meg resistor here connecting to the gate. Now that is just connected to my white bit of wire. You can see it's still very sensitive, even with the one meg resistor in there. If I just touch that, it will light up. Okay. What we can do now is have a look to see how much current is flowing into the gate. So I'll just put the white wire in there and I can now connect my multimeter easily. So from power coming in to the white wire. And we have about four microamps. But even that is enough to light the LED brightly. So you can see the actual gate current is not zero. With a MOSFET, it is pretty close to zero. With the JFET, it is a little bit higher, but it's still very low. So you can see the actual gate current is not zero. With a MOSFET, it is pretty close to zero. With the JFET, it is a little bit higher, but it's still very low. I'll now connect the gate of the JFET via the one meg resistor to the power, incoming power, okay? Positive. What voltage do we find on the gate? Well, 0 0.5, 3, 0.54 volts, yeah. So the voltage on the gate is actually very similar to the forward voltage drop of a base emitter junction. Yeah, very, very similar. In fact, it's just increasing a little bit on its own. Comparing that with a MOSFET, you would have to apply probably 3 volts to 3.5, somewhere in that region, to turn most MOSFETs on. So you can see that the JFET will switch on with a much lower voltage on the gate and also will do so drawing very little current. So this is a reason why these are extremely sensitive as you have seen. 
I think you may be interested to know how this works on a multimeter if we want to test it. We're in diode mode now. This will probably be easier if I just stick it into the breadboard. I can probe it easier. So let's see. Drain to source. About 0 0.32. Source to drain. About the same. Now I'll put the black onto the gate and we'll go again. See it's really much higher now. I'll put the red onto the gate and go again. And it's really much lower. So you can see that by putting the red or the black onto the gate, I can effectively turn it on or off. It's actually turned off now. Turn back on again. So from the gate to the drain or source, because they're interchangeable, I can see 0.691. And from the gate to the other one, I can see 0.691. That's with the positive to the gate, not the negative, okay? So positive to the gate. It looks almost like a bipolar transistor. Yeah. Almost like an NPN transistor, okay? But we get this thing where we can kind of turn it on or we can turn it off which you don't get with a bipolar transistor between collector emitter. So that's how a JFET looks in circuit. That's how you would test it. Like any other semiconductor devices, they will go short, they will go open. That's the main fault you find on these. There's no other real failure mode. So the JFET then, it's a bi-directional switch with a very, very sensitive gate. And because it works in either polarity, that's why it's ideal for things like audio signals, because an audio signal is symmetrical about zero. It's going plus and minus, okay? You don't get JFETs in like power package. I've never ever seen a power JFET. They are a low current device, so they effectively used for switching small signals, AC or DC. Okay, so nice short that one. But I hope now you know everything you need to know about JFETs to fix stuff. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all soon. Ciao for now, guys.